preparations for Nigeria versus Egypt and uh, all the issues that is um, currently happening around our football and the coach um, Sunday will say letter of apology and all that is currently going on what's what's uh, your reaction yeah, actually, we received um, a letter from uh, uh, Mr. Sondo Lise and um, apologizing for his outburst, which to us was quite needless, was quite unnecessary, and rather very unfortunate. Now, it's not just receiving a letter of apology, but uh, a lot of people are hot, a lot of people are very upset about his outburst, and which they feel is very is a, a major distraction, considering the fact that we have a major, major uh, two-header, you know, against Egypt, one of the top teams in Africa, you know, and um, yeah, so it's not just seeing the letter of apology and accepting the letter of apology. Now we need to make some repairs, we need to make some fence mending, we need to talk to various stakeholders that were directly or indirectly affected by his rantings, you know. For example, Swan. Swan is so mad. Swan has been a major platform for building football, you know, and sports generally in Nigeria. And of course, FIFA itself rates fan Swan or any sports media very highly, you know. If you go to any FIFA facilities all over the world, any stadium, the facilities they have for, uh, for, for, for the media is more than even the ones they have for the players. <laughs> so that shows how, 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 how premium, how, how important, you know, that sector of uh, football stakeholding is you know so we need to appeal to swan we need to appeal to their conscience we need to make them understand that it is all about nigeria now after swan we also need to appeal to the technical committee the technical committee they've done a very thorough job they they you know wrote a simple letter requesting for you know a, a report you know and the response was rather appalling so they feel so slighted they feel so hot and of course they feel even betrayed you know, by us, you know, so we need to appeal to them, you know, look at the caliber of people in the technical committee, you have Mutia Adekwaju, you have Christian Chuku, you have Victor Ekweba, you have Dan Ladi, you have Fresh as a vice chairman, you have then my brother Green, you know, you, you see, you have um, um, uh, Shaibu Amodu, these are people that have contributed immensely to the development of the game, on and off the field of play, so you need to appeal to them, you need to appeal to members of the Nigerian Football Federation, we need to appeal to them too, we need to appeal to the background staff that were called names, we need to appeal to them. We need to appeal to a lot of people. And once we finish appealing with them, I will see that frayed nerves have been calm, that we cannot look at the, the... We also need to appeal to the ministry. We need to appeal to the Honorable Minister, because if you are abusing the Nigerian Board Federation, if so facto you are abusing the Nigerian government, because we are an arm of the Nigerian government, whether you like it or not, we are tied to the apron strings, you know. But you need to appeal to the, 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 your, your, your financiers. You need to appeal to the sponsors. You need to appeal to a lot of people. So that's the kind of dilemma that we are in right now, the leadership, you know. Myself, Shea Akio, Michelle, you know, even Green. We've been going around trying to talk to people to make them understand that what is very elemental, what is very key right now is Nigeria's qualification for the next Nations Cup, which we consider non-negotiable. We have to qualify, you know, we have to, we have to, it's, it's a major thing. But thank God we have about 45 days to that very major event. And thank God I'm in touch with most of the players. I've been talking to them beyond what is going on, making them understand that the reason why we need to qualify. And they're all very excited about it. You know, they are all really excited. I want to see somebody to also thank the Honorable Minister. I had a very wonderful meeting with him and uh, his opinion has been I call it very legendary, you know, he's, he, he's he very mature, he's the, the quality of advice he gave. And um, he didn't say that you, you cannot act, but it says consider Nigeria, consider the future of this country and consider the players, you know. And to me, it, it was quite instructive for a minister with such a very wonderful, you know, and such a very golden advice, so to speak. So I really want to see some opportunity to thank him and the permanent secretary. Three of us, we had about a meeting for like an hour yesterday, you know, so it was very good. So I really want to see the opportunity to thank all those stakeholders, to appeal to those stakeholders. We are going to come to you one-on-one. -on -one. We are going to appeal to you. Let us see Nigeria. Let's see how we can move on. Let's forgive him. He's always human to, 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 to make mistakes. But most especially, when you make mistakes, 
such mistakes you should acknowledge you should cry for your mistakes but most importantly you should be able to acknowledge the fact you've made a mistake and learn from your mistakes and of, indeed you must be resurgent enough to bounce back so that is just it so i i i, I want to see somebody to thank them and say that we are going to qualify i want to reassure nigerians we are on course to qualify we've had a lot of distractions just we came on god We've had a lot, a lot of distractions. Today, Giva went to court, tomorrow. So it's not very healthy for us because people should not think about it. It's not a major panic. It's not a major panic. It's not Shea Akim. It's not Shea Odiko. It's not Solomon Dalong. It's not Oha, the permanent secretary. It's not about us. It's about Nigeria. It's about the future of Nigeria. And that is what we are saying. The kind of opportunities that we have in Nigeria, the kind of talent we have in Nigeria, if we constantly have distractions, there's no way we can make any impact. There's no way we can do anything very constructive. There's no way we can have a focal point in where we are going to. And it's going to be always very regrettable if we have opportunity and we don't use these opportunities. Now we have sponsors, the economy is down. Things are really, really looking bad. Things are really bad in the country. The government is still thriving to say the president is there as giving us assurance, no matter how difficult things are, we are going to support football, we are going to support sports. We are excited about that. We don't want to embarrass him. We don't want to bring situations that will bring this country into Obrobrom. We don't want to do that. All we want to do is to make Nigerians very happy. Because like I say, football is a major unifying factor in this country. Apart from creating entertainment, it also creates a career line for so many people and so many families. So we must take it seriously. Football must be seen as a treasure in this country. The same way it's seen in England. People say we are, we, we, are, we, are not, we are not we are not excited that we are owing players. If we have the money, we'll pay now. We are not excited we are owing coaches. If we have the money, we'll pay now. But the good news is that the president has approved everything we have requested to him, which means in any moment from now, we are going to be paying everything that we owe. Because once we have money, we pay. If our sponsors give us money, yeah, why not? But right now, our sponsorship relationship, if you also look at them, these sponsors are all in, based within the confines of Nigeria. And what is affecting the country or affecting the globe economically is also affecting them. So when they come to you, write letters to you that want to review your contract, want to review this, want to do that, we cannot meet our contractual agreement for now, you cannot hang them. You can only see a reason with them and pamper them and give them some kind of encouragement while you look for other means of achieving your goal or taking care of your budgetary expenses. You know? So it is a very difficult and a very tough call. But I'm a child of God and I'm also very confident that the God that gave us leadership will also lead us to El Dorado. I am 100% convinced about that. But I want to appeal to Nigerians to believe in the leadership of the Nigerian Football Federation. We've been on for about 16 months. We've been able to achieve an appreciable level of success on the field. We've won trophies off the field. We have built capacities. So I really want to crave the indulgence of Nigerians to see that we can do it. I just have that very strong feel that we can do it. We can qualify, not only qualifying for the World Cup, to get an appreciable level in the World Cup, because we have the talent. Look at what Igalo is doing in England. Look at what Chikatara did in, look at what uh, Etebo did in the under 23. Look at what Victor did in the under 17. Look at the various strata. And if you harmonize this, do you think Nigeria can win the World Cup? I do. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you.